I'm going to give a report this morning on the uh, mission trip to Ghana because this is a part of the extension of the ministry of Baytown Community Church as I travel to, to Ghana. This is my sixth year to travel to Ghana. We weren't able to do it in 2020 and 2021 because of COVID. But we do this to fulfill the Great Commission. And the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20 is to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, you'll notice the, the main command in this is make disciples. And there are three words. In fact, I'm going to get my pen out that kind of explain how we do this. And uh, you can see them. And right. So there are three, this, this is the main command. There are three words, go, baptize, and teaching. And in, in the Greek, that's a participle. It's going, baptizing, and teaching is how we make disciples. Going, of course, is the evangelism part where we share the gospel and people come to faith in Jesus Christ. And then baptizing them is the first step of discipleship in obedience to Christ. Uh, they're baptized and are, are identified with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. And then the last part of disciple-making is to teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. And so uh, Ghana is the most evangelized nation in Africa. They've had missionaries uh, going there for the last 150 years. Someone once described Ghana as uh, the Christians in Ghana. Christianity in Ghana is a mile wide, and it's an inch deep. In other words, there's a lot of people out there that have professed to believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, but they're very shallow in, in their growth. And, and sometimes that's caused some problems as they try to mix their, their spiritism religion in with Christianity and, and kind of make a, a conglomeration of, of what is neither. And uh, so, but... Um, they, they come to faith in Christ, they're baptized, but they, they really have, don't have a lot of sound teaching over there. Uh, those who are preaching, a lot of them uh, don't have any training at all. They've, they just feel called to, to be a pastor, and so they just go out and start a church. And, uh, so, and then they really have no seminary training or, or training of any kind, and it's like the blind leading the blind. And yet uh, there's a mandate for discipleship. Uh, in 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, Paul told young Timothy, who was a pastor at Crete, he said, uh, these things, oh, excuse me, the pastor at Ephesus, these things you have heard from me, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. So Paul t took Timothy along with him on his second and third missionary journey and Timothy was able to sit and to hear the teaching of Paul. And so he said, the things you've heard and seen from me, things you've heard in my presence, the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And so the discipleship mandate is that we teach others so that others can go and teach others. And, and that, um, that's our goal in going to Ghana. Uh, to entrust the things which uh, we have learned from faithful men uh, to other faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Uh, and so uh, it's a real privilege to be able to go to, to Ghana and to, to work and train uh, with pastors and church leaders uh, to fulfill this, this mandate. And each year that I've gone to Ghana, uh, there have been challenging spiritual warfare in getting there, and this year was no exception. The international flying has been streamlined to make it more convenient and secure to travel. 
So you you first go to a kiosk now, and uh, you scan your passport, and it's supposed to print your boarding pass and luggage tags, and then you go and check your bags in. Uh, Very simple, right? Well, not so much. So uh, my flight was scheduled to leave at 745 from here to to Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., and I got to the airport about 5.45, you know, two hours early, you know, and uh, went to the kiosk uh, for United Airlines at Bush International, scanned my passport, and up, up pops a Ghana entry form. Okay, now we usually fill out the Ghana entry form when we get to Ghana. And so I wasn't expecting to fill this out until I got, got to Ghana. Well, I, I filled out the Ghana entry form, name of uh, passport number, expiration date, and then it asked for the contact person in Ghana, their name, a phone number, and place you'd be staying. Of course, I had that information, but it was all packed away in my suitcase. So, so about 15 minutes later, I I've, I've get my hands on that, and so then I begin to fill out the information that, that is required on there, and it, it turns out that the form I filled out uh, came back with another person's name on it, not mine. And uh, so I tried to correct the form, thinking that I must have put the wrong passport number in. But I was not permitted to change it. And uh, so I asked for help, and the person came over and said, well, is this your name? I said, No. He said, well, I can't help you. He said, your name's got to match your passport. You can't go. And I said, okay. And so I tried to, again, to fill out a new form and, again, put in the name and all that stuff. And, again, it, it, uh, I, it never came up with my name on it. And uh, so I said, well, this is, this is a problem. And uh, so I realized I was running out of time. It was about 20 minutes uh, until my plane started boarding. I hadn't even gone through to check in my luggage or the security line. And so I, I flagged down another person. I said, uh, look, I said, I'm, I'm having an issue here with this, and it, I can't, it doesn't let me change uh, the, the number and uh, upload the form, and uh, my plane leaves uh, pretty soon. And, and, uh, and they said, well, you need to go over here to the special ticketing line. I said, well, thank you very much. So I go over to the special ticketing line, and uh, uh, by God's grace, there was uh, no people in that line. So I was able to go right up, and and he said, where are you going? I said, "Uh, Ghana. And he said, "Uh, passport. I gave him the passport. He scanned my passport, printed the boarding pass, the luggage tags, didn't ask anything about the the entry form into Ghana, and said, "Uh, have a pleasant trip. (laughs) So luckily, um, Deb had uh, gotten a TSA pre-check for me. So when I went to the security line, it was a pretty good sized line by that time. No, it's fine. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. So nothing to hide. So uh, yeah. So anyway. So I, I was able to go right through the, the TSA pre-check, and, and there was no line there. And, and uh, so I got to my plane, to the gate, uh, right at the time they were boarding and was able to board. So, but it seemed like there's always a challenge, you know, uh, spiritual warfare. But appreciate your prayers. And uh, we got on the got on the flight, uh, and the flight was going from Bush Airport to uh, Washington D.C. And we, usually we go to New York and then fly to London. This year we uh, flew from, uh, and there were three of us, uh, several of us flying, one from the state of Washington, one from Orlando, and we were to meet up in Dulles Airport in Washington D.C. So. It's about a a a three-and-a-half-hour flight from here to Washington, D.C., and it was a real pleasant flight. Um, Got to to Washington, D.C. My plane uh, landed in Washington about 8.45 in the morning, and my plane, the flight to Ghana, was 6.45 that evening. So I had a lot of time spent in the Washington airport. And, uh, And praise the Lord, somebody had given me some money uh, right before I left and said, this is, 
and they called it airport money. I said, okay, I, I'm not going to spend that much at the airport, but yeah. But it turns out I was able to buy a pass to the United Airlines Lounge. And I don't, a lot of people don't know there's these airplane lounges at airports, and they have these really plush seats, and they have food, and they have, uh, you know, soft drinks, and, and, uh, juice and all kinds of stuff and uh but i was able to to buy one of those and and just relax there and so it really made that part of the trip very comfortable uh the other guys that were flying in uh roger frank Howard from washington his plane got in 345 uh ron huffman from orlando his plane got in at 415 so we were able to meet up and have dinner together before our flight to to ghana and so the the flight was directly from DC to uh, to Ghana, and it uh, it going directly there saved us six hours because usually we go to London and it's about ten hours from from New York to London, and then another six hours from London to Accra. So by going directly from Dallas to Accra, we were able to it's ten hours, and so it it really uh, was very pleasant. In, uh, in that experience. So Accra is the capital city of Ghana. And so that's where the, the training was. And uh, we got there on Saturday. On Sunday, it was a privilege of us to go and preach in various churches. And so this is Yao. He's the pastor of Good Shepherd Presbyterian Church, which I had the privilege of preaching in his church uh, Sunday morning. Uh, lovely, lovely group of people. Um, of all the churches I preached in in Ghana, there was uh, this is by far the most formal. I preached in a few Baptist churches, a couple of independent churches before, uh, and uh, uh, but this was the most formal and traditional. It was a Presbyterian church over there, and you'll notice the altar in the middle. Uh, you'll notice on the the left side there's a small pulpit uh, where people read the scripture and. And then the, you'll notice in the, on the other side, there's a, there's a pretty big pulpit, and that's where people preach from. Even in uh, Presbyterian churches, some Presbyterian churches, Methodist churches today, you'll see a split pulpit system. It's just not one pulpit. They have split pulpits. So that's not unusual even in the States. But talk about a big pulpit. I mean, this was, this was huge. And uh, so that was, that was kind of fun, preaching from this big pulpit there. So, and it was in English. This was, a, this was an English service. Most of the other services that I preached at, you had a, it was in the native language, and you had an interpreter. But this was an all English. This is the early service, and it was all English, so I was able to preach uh, without an interpreter here. Uh, but it was a real joy. Most of the churches in Ghana are built as you, uh, as you had the money. And, uh, and so this is no different. It's still a work under construction. Uh, there wasn't any AC. Um, the church uh, took up three offerings, and uh, I thought that was a little unusual. But, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of fun. They, they make a, a big production of the offering. They bring the box up. And, uh, and everybody comes and files by, and they kind of dance to music on the way up and, and give their offering uh, at three different times. The first offering was a regular offering to pay for the expenses of the church. The second offering was a welfare offering to take care of needy people. And the third offering was a, was a building project uh, uh, connected to the day of the week you were born. And so Yao says, when, what day were you born? I said, well, I was born on a Tuesday. He said, well, you're going to go with the Tuesday group then. I said, okay. And uh, so fortunately, I had some Ghana currency from my last mission trip, and so I was able to contribute to, to all three gladly. It was a, a lot of fun. So this is the group of, of people that were gathered for training this year. And uh, so there was about 45 that uh, were signed up and registered for training at uh, this year's uh, Bible Institute. Um, and this is the workbook that was handed out, the notes. These are student notes that are handed to each student. And you'll notice the names on the cover. It says Ambassadors Leadership Training Institute. And then under that, it says in Grace Life Institute. And so the reason that it says both is because Fred Amoadarko is uh, an ambassador with Ambassadors for Christ. And he's the 
Charlie's contact over in Ghana that organizes this and secures the place where we can have this. It was a retreat center, uh, very nice facilities uh, there. And, uh, and so he uh, it calls it the ambassador's leadership training, and it's combined with, with Char- what Charlie does in the Grace Life Institute. So that's why both names are on there. This year, we taught three training classes, uh, Bible study methods, uh, Romans, and basic Bible doctrine, plus one advanced class for graduates of the Institute taught by uh, Fred Amoadarko and Roger Fankhauser. So uh, the Book of Romans uh, was taught by uh, Ron Hoffman. Uh, He's a retired pastor, and he teaches at Florida Bible College. He's from Orlando. Very small world because he and I know a lot of mutual friends. Uh, He's very good friends with Dr. Stan Pons, who I'm very good friends with and tried to get him the last two years for our fall Bible conference, but something has always come up and Stan can't come. But he's very good friends with him. Even smaller world. Turns out that his daughter, Danae, and her husband, uh, Jeremy Haskin, were my son and his wife, Aaron's best friends at Southeastern Bible College. And uh, they were in John's wedding, and John and Aaron were in their wedding. And so Ron says, I know your son. <laughs> and so they had, uh, uh, he had sent some pictures back, and, and uh, he had talked to his, his daughter. He said, oh, I know, I know his, uh, them. They were in our wedding. So small world. And, uh, but it it was a great time. Ron's a, Ron's a great guy and, uh, a good teacher. So, uh, it's a good class class and a great facility. Uh, the facility we there, we have there is, is set up for, um, uh, conferences and training and teaching. And so it's a, it's a great facility. The basic Bible doctrine course, uh, the man who is supposed to teach the basic Bible doctrine this year, uh, could not come. So, Roger Frankhauser had been there before and had taught this and offered his notes to print. And Fred and Charlie were going to teach, team teach that course. And so uh, Charlie had to fly back on Tuesday. And Fred had a doctor's appointment. His wife, Ruby, had been diagnosed with uh, cancer. And she's had surgery. And this was a follow up appointment. And I, I said, look, I'll, I'll take care of the rest of the course. And, and so gladly uh, uh, was able to do that. And, uh, but it's a good thing I, I just finished teaching basic Bible doctrine here on Wednesday nights. So it was fresh on my mind and praise the Lord for that. So, so from uh, left to right, you see uh, Charlie Bing. Uh, and then there's uh, uh, Charles, Cyprian, Eric, George, Emmanuel, and Roger Frankhauser is on the other side there. And uh, these are our men. The man in the white church sh- shirt is named Cyprian. And these are men that he is discipling, and uh, he brought them to this Grace Life Institute this summer. So I was able to teach basic uh, Bible study methods. That was the main course I was uh, going to teach and uh, wound up teaching both this and Bible study methods, uh, or and basic Bible doctrine. But to me, uh, base, Bible study methods is so crucial because they hear things on the radio and TV and they think, that's, that's right, I'm going to preach that. And, and they don't really know how to study the Bible and interpret it for themselves. And so it's a, a real joy to train them to how to study the Bible in such a way they can be confident uh, about their interpretation and make accurate applications. So it was a, a real joy to be able to, to be there and to, and to share these things with us. It was a uh, tremendous joy. I, I had learned these, this method of Bible study 50 years ago from when I went to seminary from uh, Dr. Howard Hendricks, and it was a real, real joy to be able to share this with the, with the men uh, there. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, here's a schedule of our week of training. You notice there are four hours of teaching in the morning, and then there are three hours of teaching in the afternoon. 
and that and then there's an an hour devotion in the morning at six thirty, and then you break from for breakfast from seven thirty to eight thirty, and then it's uh, it's all day teaching. You have a lunch break from uh, one to three, and uh, and then it's it's pretty pretty much all day teaching. It's a grueling schedule, uh, both for them and for the teachers, and uh, it, for one course, much less two courses. And I I want to thank you for praying for strength of stamina. I had, uh, when I talked to Deb, asked for, uh, that she pass along, you pray for strength and stamina because I sure needed it. And, and I was able to do that and praise the Lord. Uh, uh, it was, uh, God gave me the, the strength to do that because as I, uh, you'll notice the schedule on, uh, on Wednesday, you know, this is, I taught two hours right before lunch and then I taught three hours after lunch. And so that was uh, that was uh, pretty taxing physically on me and draining a little bit. But I was able to stand up and teach the f- the first session and then uh, sit down the second session. And there's it was set up for either one. And and Ron always sat down when he taught. So I I was able to do that. So it worked out great. And uh, even though um, the churches and things didn't have air conditioning, um, the weather there. Well, the average temperature here in Houston hit 100 degrees every day while I was in Ghana. The average temperature there uh, was around 75. Yeah, yeah. We got to suffer for Jesus over there, right? Yeah. And uh, I think one day it got it actually got up to 78. And uh, so, but there was a lot of this is the rainy season over there, and there was a lot of cloud cover. And so there wasn't direct sunlight and, and things. They're very close to the equator, so there's not much difference between uh, night and day uh, in terms of the temperature. It got down to about 74 at night, and, and they've been very pleasant. And uh, the retreat center, um, every year we go back, they've, they've made changes. And uh, the last time we went there, they had air conditioning in the rooms, and that was really nice. We never had hot water before. But this year we went back and we had hot water in our room. So praise the Lord for small, small things uh, that we take for granted over here. Now, the food over there was great. Um, I prepare my fish a little differently, but it tasted great. Um, and I, yeah, uh, people in Ghana do eat the head. And, uh, and I found out, yeah, it's actually pretty good. I'm not sure what species of fish this is, but I've never had a fish with so many bones in it all my life. It seemed like there was a bone everywhere. But it was worth it because it was great. It was delicious, uh, delicious food. Uh, This is chicken uh, with cassava and plantain. It was, uh, again, delicious food, but a bit on the spicy side. If you like spice, you'll love the the food in Ghana. Um, for breakfast every day, we had some form of a porridge or stew. Uh, this was, um, uh, some days it was, uh, well, they call it grits, but it was really hominy. It hadn't been formed into grits yet. So, <laughs> but it was, it was really good. Uh, and some uh, oatmeal. And this was what they called Tom Brown porridge. And uh, I guess it was from a missionary that was there, uh, you know, 100 years ago. And they roasted corn, crushed it up to make this warm cereal, uh, kind of like oatmeal, but a bit more soupy. Uh, but I discovered that everything tastes better with a few uh, teaspoons of sugar in it. So, <laughs> so uh, and the fresh fruits are in abundant supply. The soil in Ghana is some of the richest and most fertile soil in all of Africa. And this is a plate of fresh mangoes, and the sweetest I've ever tasted. They have a pineapple over there they call sugar loaf pineapple, and it's the sweetest thing that I've ever tasted as well. One of their favorite local dishes is called fufu, and it's, it's one of my favorites as well. The round ball in the center of the bowl is a dough-like mixture made of cassava plant and plantain pounded together in a, in a big either wooden bowl or metal kettle and uh, used a, a long, long pole to just pound it, and they do that for hours uh, to make it come together, and, and it's uh, got a texture um, a little bit like peanut butter, you know, and, uh, but it's, uh, it's really good, and it's mixed with this red stew, and 
in order and the traditional way of eating it is you take three fingers and you stick it in that uh, ball of, uh, of uh, dough like uh, mixture and you put your thumb in the middle and make a little cup and then you with that little cup you make a you get dip it into the soup and bring it to your mouth i tried that the first year and uh it 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 didn't work so well. My my cup never really formed very well. <laughs> so um, the years pay. I love it, and I eat it with a spoon. And everybody looks at me a little weird, but I I just that's the way I've I've I try to eat that. So, but the best thing about Ghana is the people. Uh, this is Max Orduro. He traveled five hours to come to this training. He's from the second largest city in Ghana, Kumasi. And uh, Kumasi, you'll see, is up to the uh, northeast of, of Accra. And the road system there, it, uh, you know, if we had our road system, it'd be two hours. But in their road system, it's about five because you just can't go very fast dodging potholes. It just as uh, I've uh, we've traveled there before, and it's uh yeah it's uh it's 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 not a whole lot of fun traveling that way. But uh, if you get on the main roads, they're they're fine in Accra. It's a capital city. There's about two million people, and you get on the main roads, it's kind of like our freeways. And uh, but if you get off of those uh, onto the side roads, they're dirt, and they're 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 potholes. Some of them are like foot and a half deep and uh, so uh, there's a lot of work to be done in, in infrastructure but uh, Maxwell uh, wrote this note uh, he said I've had the privilege to go through this worthy biblical training for four years this is my fourth time representing it's an honor to be a part of this family and to be under the tutoring of various great teachers of the word of God this year's edition has been a great enlightening as I was taken through Bible study methods, basic Bible doctrine, and the book of Romans. The love and zeal for which our teachers taught are highly commendable. And truly writing, I, my knowledge and understanding about the gospel has been deepened. I am transformed to go and teach others with great joy in my heart. Big ups to the team. God bless you all. So that was Maxwell. Um, Another man, uh, this is Paul, my friend Paul Napari, and he's from the city of Tamale. And Tamale is a little further north in Ghana. It's, uh, uh, but he had, he's come uh, and he's been there uh, several years before, and we've gotten to be friends. And uh, so uh, Paul gave his testimony about the, the, the training that we have there. And I thought it'd be fun to let you hear uh, him speak in, uh, he's speaking in English. Just remember that. And uh, Troy's got the, the video clip he's going to show on uh, Paul Napari just giving his testimony uh, here. Okay. I
today, if I get home, I'm just praying that I will have opportunity to preach from the book of Romans because it has been well. And I believe it's so easy. The Lord has made it so easy for me to be the book of Romans. And I never will be grateful to you for the commitment I have to my commitment. I'm very, 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 so many. And I just see the ways. Did you follow that? Context, contact, you got that part. You know, they they speak the king's English, you know, British English, and when they speak fast, you can't understand them. It's like a foreign language. But you know, the same is true. If we speak, if I'm speaking to you, and if I on my normal preaching rate, they could not understand me either. So we have to speak really, really slow and distinctly uh, so they can get what we say. But here's what Paul wrote. He said, I wanted to let you know, and, he, and this was a personal note to me. He said, dear Tim, I wanted you to know how much I've, you've been a blessing to me over the past few days. I've been here. Your lessons on Bible study methods have made me feel more equipped uh, than before to leave my church ministry. I'm able to better interpret any parts of Scripture with your method of observation, interpretation, and application. God bless you, Paul Napari. So... This is a note from Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel is from Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is a nation just north of Ghana. So the, they had come down to this training from another nation uh, just north of Ghana. And so uh, Ezekiel writes, Your message and teaching on the Bible study method was so perfect. How I, I now understand more about the book of Galatians. I use the book of Galatians in every illustration uh, for observation, interpretation, and application. So I was kind of teaching the book of Galatians. I was doing that. Burkina Faso is longing for the message of grace. Such an institute will really impact pastors and believers there. God bless you. And uh, here are three guys, uh, Charles, Eric, and Maxwell. You heard from Maxwell. Here's a note from Eric. He's the tall guy in the middle in the orange shirt. So um, then he just writes some of the benefits of the training. Having taking part in this year's training as a first timer through the lectures in the Book of Romans by Reverend Ron, I've been so much blessed and enlightened on the Book of Romans as it deals with the issues of sin and deprivation of men according to the writings of Paul. The book of Romans really depicts the true sinful nature of men and also deals with the issue of salvation only by faith and only in the finished work of Christ. I am so much thankful for God to God for our resource persons. God bless Reverend Ron. On the part of Reverend Tim, who took us through the correct interpretation of scriptures, I have been so much blessed through his teachings. I came to realize how the scriptures are to be interpreted contextually, carefully gleaning the intent of the author for application. So much blessed through his lectures. God bless Reverend Tim. So the, the men really do. They're hungry. They appreciate what we're doing. And that's what, what lights our fire. You know. um, Charles is sitting down, Charles Van Dyke. And, and here's a note from him. I cannot express with words, or cannot with words express my thankfulness towards God, instructors and supporters for this program held here in Ghana. Though I'm a person who received the gospel and ministered for so many years, yet I realized through the conference that most sermons I deliver to the congregation and witness I do are out of context. And I also just talk the talk and don't walk the walk. There have really been a paradigm shift of my thoughts and my heart towards ministry, and I pray the conference will be done at least twice a year. Uh, God bless you. So this is how hungry they are for that. And, you know, they, they, I, it was just exciting to see the light come on when they realized that, you know, context matters, you know, and what they thought a scripture meant may not mean what they've been teaching because of the context. And so it was really a joy. Uh, to, do, to do this. Um, this is a note from James. Uh, personally, the lessons on principles of Bible study methods have really impacted me a lot. A spe specifically, one, it has made me know how to understand a Bible passage and that is consider its context. 
Two, it has upgraded my understanding of the difference of the doctrine of faith without works and faith with works. And this can really help me to teach lost souls out there to know Christ and live according to his spirit. God really bless you guys for your support in person and in kind. And so uh, this is uh, uh, Peter on uh, my left and in the striped shirt. Uh, that's Timothy. These are some of the other guys I got to know. Uh, I love the traditional dress that, that they dress up in. And uh, this is, uh, I thought, is, is, was, was especially unique. And, and, uh, and then some just uh, wore just regular T-shirts and, you know, just regular guys like, like Gordon here. And, uh, and Samuel, you know, they just are effervescent in their, in their smile and they're wanting to learn and to know God's grace. Uh, and this is Maxwell. And, uh, and Roger Frankhauser and myself. And uh, this is my friend, uh, my pastor friend, Yao. And uh, he's in traditional dress. This was his day to give devotions that day. And uh, so um, he dressed in his traditional dress. And uh, he is, uh, he's also with Ambassador for Christ, Fred Moadarko, um, who is, uh, he's the director of um, the, Ambassador for Christ International over um, the Middle East, including Africa. And uh, Yao is the director, the national director for Ghana. And so uh, I've got a little clip for him. He's given the morning devotion here. And if you think you couldn't understand Paul, uh, just try listening to, to Yao here for a sec. It's, uh, <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah, well, I didn't either. So, <laughs> so uh, this, is, uh, this is George, uh, the man in the middle, uh, wrote this note. Uh, he said, I'm very grateful to be part of this conference. My coming here has been a blessing to me while I was going through the training. Actually, I was saved from all my sins before I came here. The wonderful grace that I received and learned through the program is that I realized that I read the Bible and teach people around me, but I don't study the Bible to know the context. But when I came here, I could learn how to do observation, interpretation, and application. It makes me understand the method of studying the Bible. And we also, uh, the book of Romans that we went through, uh, made me to know the difference between the law and how it works. So um, uh, here's a note. Uh, this, uh, it says, I, I salute you in the name of the Almighty God. The program has been very beneficial to me. It's helped me understand some of the books of the Bible that have been taught. Now I'll also teach others so they will have an in-depth understanding of the Bible. Thank you very much. For your support, and I pray God to bless you. So these are encouraging notes. Some were signed, some were, uns were unsigned. This is a note that was unsigned. It says, it was a great and wonderful experience being under your feet. The exposition on grace, righteousness, and belief had been a practical lesson to me. The presentation on observation, interpretation, application, and most especially context had refined my approach toward Bible studies. The doctrine of God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, it's marvelous to know. And I'm also encouraged to do good always and endure hardship. This has been a great impact on my life. I'm very grateful the Lord be with you all. 
So it's, uh, it's things like this that are, are a real encouragement. This is a guy that's in seminary. And uh, I'm a seminarian. I've gone through seminary for one year. I can say that I've learned so much within one week of, uh, that, to augment what I learned in school. I hope to get the opportunity to participate in more programs to build my personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and also learn to be able to teach others. If there are any materials that can be shared, I'll be glad to receive them via my email address. And he gives me his email address there. And I've, I've sent several guys wanted a copy of my uh, presentation and notes and things. Happy to, happy to give them along. Um, another note, I've never been confident in my salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ than now. The teaching I've received in this course has revealed my standing in Christ, and I've learned that my salvation in Christ Jesus is guaranteed by faith and faith alone. I've also learned how to study the Bible and apply it in my Christian life and also to teach others. I'll be glad to learn more. Please come back again to teach us more. Thank you, Ron, Tim, Roger, and the team. God bless you. So it's, it's all about feeding these people the truth and, and training them. They, they are hungry and they want to learn. One thing God showed me over the six years I've gone to Ghana is the pastors and church leaders are hungry to know God's truth and God's word and are eager to learn and are very teachable, even if they've been taught something that's been wrong when they see it in scripture oh wow i didn't realize that and they're very very teachable and uh, it's been a real encouragement there so uh these are some other people uh this is uh, the guys have fun i mean these are a great uh you know they're they're not a staunch uh group of guys these these are young guys that love to love to have fun play around and uh so uh, and this is Robert, another another guy, and that that's what makes this the individuals, and you get to know them, and you get to pray for them and their ministries, and uh, just a a great bunch of people, and and they want to thank you because you make this institute possible for them through your guests, and uh, so uh, thank you for partnering with me in this year's mission trip to Ghana, your financial support, your prayer support. Uh, made this trip possible. And so uh, it's this is what it's all about, training the people. And I, I do appreciate your partnership with me and your participation as I go. I represent you. And this has been a real joy for me. And and I want you will reap the rewards as you participated in, in praying, being a prayer partner with me in this. So, so let's pray. Father, I do thank you and praise you for the opportunity to go to Ghana again this summer. Thank you for the, the people that you brought out to be trained, the pastors and church leaders. I pray that you would uh, take the truth that has been taught, uh, and Lord, they would go and, and be faithful men to teach others and to train others as well. And Lord, I pray you bless their churches, their congregations, and their ministries. And Lord, that you would... Uh, Help them to uh, preach with confidence and, and boldness because they've studied the Scripture and they are accurate in their interpretation and applications. And Lord, I just thank you for what you've done and what you're going to continue to do uh, through this ministry. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.